Hi, I'm Bob Tabor with LearnVisualStudio.net. Now, before you can develop Windows Phone 8 apps, you're going to need to install the Windows Phone 8 SDK, or Software Development Kit, and you'll need to install it on a computer that's running Windows 8 64-bit edition. Now, the reason for this requirement is the Windows Phone Emulator. It's running as a virtual machine in Hyper-V, which is Microsoft's virtualization platform. So you'll be running the Windows Phone 8 operating system in a little window that looks just like a phone on your desktop for the purpose of testing your work. So you're running a little computer inside of your larger computer, okay? So to be clear, if you're not sitting at a computer with Windows 8 64-bit edition at this moment, then you're going to need to install that first in order to continue with this series, or more importantly, you're going to need it in order to build Windows Phone 8 apps and to install the uh, Windows Phone 8 SDK. Now, if you're not sure which version of Windows 8 your computer is currently running, then you can go to the control panel. And I think the easiest way to get to that is just to go to the search charm and type in control and, oh, it'll pop up there in the results. I'll just hit the enter key on my keyboard. And in the control panel, I'm going to select the system and security option and then the system option. And this will show me which version or system type I'm running, the 64-bit operating system on an X64 based processor. Great. Okay, so what I want to do is save you a little bit of time and expense here. If you're running a previous version of Windows, let's say Windows 7, and it's the 32-bit edition, you simply cannot use the Windows Upgrade Advisor uh, in order to install or upgrade to Windows 8 electronically. Instead, what you're going to need to do is purchase the Windows Pro Upgrade DVD. Now, for a more thorough explanation of this in every possible scenario imaginable, check out Paul Thorat's posting at this URL. But in any case, in my case, I purchased the OEM version of Windows 8 64-bit Pro. Now, I was concerned that I could, that I couldn't do a clean install of uh, using the upgrade because uh, I wanted to just blow away my current operating system and start over from scratch. However, that apparently is not the case, and I could have saved a few bucks with the upgrade option. Okay, So also, I want to make sure that you understand that there's a difference between Windows 8 64-bit edition and Windows 8 Pro. There's actually a kind of a combination of, uh, of, of these. So you have the Windows 8 64-bit Pro, Windows 8 64-bit, Windows 8 32-bit Pro, Windows 8 32-bit. Now, for the purpose of developing, uh, developing Windows Phone apps, you don't need the Pro option. Just make sure whatever you choose, it's the 64-bit edition, okay? Next, what you're going to need to do is download and install the Windows Phone 8 SDK. Now, if you already have Visual Studio 2012, so one of the paid versions, uh, I think there's a standard, but I use professional or greater, uh, the installer will merely add the tools required for phone development. If you don't have Visual Studio 2012, the paid edition, already installed, then the Windows Phone 8 SDK will automatically install Window, uh, Visual Studio 2012 Express for Windows Phone 8. This will provide a single task version of Visual Studio that's meant specifically for Windows Phone 8 development. So you won't get the tools to create Windows 8 store apps, you know, like uh, you can see here and you can go in the store uh, right here. You won't be able to build those apps with that version. Of course, you can download a whole different free edition of Visual Studio for that purpose. You also won't be able to build Windows Presentation Foundation apps for building desktop apps like you would, you'd run here on the desktop. You won't be able to build ASP.NET web apps and so on. All right, So it's single purpose. Uh, and so I'm going to be using this version, uh, the Visual Studio 2012 Express for Windows Phone 8 for the remainder of this video series. But I assure you that the experience is almost identical to using Visual Studio 2012 Professional or Greater with the Windows Phone 8 SDK installed. Phew, okay. Uh, so you can get the, uh, the Windows Phone 8 SDK from this URL on screen right now, developer.windowsphone.com. Uh, 
you can obviously get uh, different language versions. I'm pointing you to the English version, so just make sure you go to the start at developer.windowsphone.com and navigate through, and you'll find the tools that you need. Uh, and I'm I'm sure you're already familiar with downloading and running an installer, so I'm not going to walk through that process here. I think that's a little bit of a waste of time. But during installation, you might see a message that looks something like this. All right, it'll say, uh, give you a warning that hardware virtualization is disabled on this PC. You must enable it through the BIOS settings. For more information, see this MSDN article. Actually, uh, there's a different article that you're going to need to take a look at. Uh, you're going to enable basically your motherboard to run Hyper-V. So take a look at this article, how to enable Hyper-V for Windows Phone Emulator uh, on screen or search for it in Bing.com. Now, in my case, I recently built my own machine and I used the, uh, the Asus Sabertooth Z77, uh, which is a high-end military upgrade uh, uh, motherboard. I don't even know what that means, but it sounded cool, so it had the other features I wanted on it. And it's also running the, uh, the uh, i7, the Intel i7 3770K, which fits in an LGA 1155 socket. Uh, most importantly, it supports Intel's hyper-threading technology. Uh, I just have to tell my motherboard that I want to turn it on. And so in the BIOS for my motherboard, I had to enable Hyper-V by going to the advanced settings and then the advanced tab and then look through the possible settings. Now in my case, it was called hyper-threading. Uh, now, uh, admittedly, this might all sound a little bit scary, but it's a one-time change and after I work past the terminology and how to actually get into my BIOS, you know, I don't do that every day, it all went really smoothly. So don't be scared away by that step in the process. And I assure you that every motherboard will be a little bit different. Every, uh, um, uh, every version of BIOS will be maybe a tiny bit different. It might depend on which, uh, which um, chip you're using as well. Uh, what I would recommend is this. If you're not sure how to do this for your particular brand of computer, just run the SDK installer and follow its instructions. It's possible that you won't need to do anything special at all. But if you do need to do something special, if you see that little warning, then it's very possible that somebody else in the world with the exact same computer that you have has worked through this issue and has already been kind enough to blog about it. Okay, So here's where good searching skills on the internet with a search engine like Bing.com is an invaluable skill. Uh, just a few minutes. And heck, even an hour researching this can save you headaches of trying to figure it out yourself if you're not comfortable already with doing it. And as a last resort, you could contact the manufacturer of your computer to simply ask how to enable hyper-threading in the BIOS. Uh, they should be able to point you to a knowledge base article on how to perform this operation. Okay, as the old expression goes, there's more than one way to skin a cat. I was able to successfully install Windows Phone 8 SDK and Visual Studio 2012 Express for Windows Phone on a Mac Pro running OS X Mountain Lion and VMware Fusion, the latest version. I just made sure that whenever I created the virtual machine that it was 64-bit uh, and prior to installing the operating system I set up the processors and the memory in VMware Fusion. Uh, and I gave it plenty of cores and plenty of memory and made sure that the enable hypervisor applications in this virtual machine option is checked like you see on screen. Now I can't remember, it's been a couple of weeks ago since I did this, but uh, I can't remember if you need the enable code profiling applications I, uh, in this virtual machine checked. It's been a month since I set this up, like I said, uh, but it works with it turned on, so I recommend you leave that setting on too, okay? Uh, and I only bring up the Mac running the VMware solution for this reason. If there's a will, there's a way. What seems hard is usually pretty easy. Just need to know which options to configure and you'll be on your way. Again, Bing.com can be your best friend in cases like this. So after you work through these requirements, you're ready to get started and follow along in this series and to begin building Windows Phone 8 apps. And so we're going to begin doing that in the next video. We'll see you there. Thank you.